guys, welcome back. This is my latest painting called Moon Glow. It's watercolor on cold press paper. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the process of painting this, maybe go over some lessons learned. Um, I've been experimenting with a lot of different mediums lately, but I just keep coming back to watercolor and it, it definitely is remaining my favorite among all of the painting mediums that I've tried. Uh, and for this particular painting, it was actually a giveaway for one of my celebration streams on Twitch. Um, and the winner took the took a photo of a moon that was so bright it almost looked like the sun. And this was their requested scene that they wanted me to paint. So it was a bit of a challenge because I knew I wanted the moon to be really bright, but still have that nighttime um, moon glow, which is why I kind of ended up calling it moon glow. Um, so to start off, I laid down a pretty dark layer of pigment in the sky just to set the tone. Um, and while I waited for that to dry, I started picking up little uh, areas in the sky where I wanted the clouds to remain. Um, and since they were going to be brighter than the sky, I had to do that while it was wet. And it took a little while for it to dry, about 20 minutes total. So while I was waiting, I did the, the sand and then I could go back and I could add some color and uh, value to the clouds. Um, I made them pretty dark around the moon itself in order to get that look of um, a silhouetted cloud, which actually makes the moon stand out more, make it look brighter. Um, and then I made sure on the water right below the moon, I was keeping it warm and bright, not going over it with any of my dark pigment uh, in order to draw the eye there make it look like there's a really bright reflection and just add to the overall contrast of the water. Uh, and so I knew elsewhere on the, on the surface of the water, I could get really dark and have fun with lots of different textures. And also in terms of color, I kept it pretty warm um, with the yellows and the warmer purple tones by the moon and the light of the moon. And then as I got further away from the moon, I started going into cooler tones, especially with the indigo and the cobalt blue <clears throat> on the water. Um, but at this point, I definitely realized uh, I needed the sky to be darker so that everything would pop a little bit more. Um, one of my lessons learned from this painting, and it's, it's actually something I seem to learn and forget every time, is that you know watercolor dries so much lighter than when you first put it down. So to to do something like this where it's a, basically a night sky, um, I should have gone really, really dark with my first layer of pigment in the sky. Uh, it would have been so much easier. And um, it's something that I, I, I'm really challenged by every time. And it's just, I guess, a technique thing. Um, I have to learn how to figure, um, get more pigment on my brush and balance the ratio of water to pigment when I first lay it down. I'm, I guess I'm kind of nervous about that and I'm a little bit of a chicken when it comes to that. So I, I do work a little bit lighter from the beginning. So it's just something that I need to get used to and just push myself to do more often. Um, and you can see here, I was like just kind of fiddling with details. I knew I had to go back and make the sky darker, but I was having fun with textures on the sand and in the water. Um, and also working on the value, making the clouds kind of pop. Some of the clouds were brighter, um, some were darker, and I was just playing with um, the depth of those. Um, but yep, it was inevitable. I knew um, once the sky was completely dry, I was going to go back in with more of a dry brush and get another layer of darkness on the sky. Um, so I got my big brush again, and uh, I it's it was pretty hard to balance the water ratio at this point because I didn't want to pick up any of the existing paint on the surface um, so I worked with really really uh, slow <laughs> brush strokes and built up another darker layer on top um, I ended up doing a couple more layers actually um, but once I did that you know I could see other areas of the painting that either needed to get darker or shift in color value so it was kind of a um, it, the whole thing was a learning process for me um, and like I, I kind of know what I'm doing but it's also uh, some things are new to me every time I paint something I learn something and 
of course I can see all my mistakes and I, I try not to let that get to me because I know it's just all part of the process. But um, sometimes it's kind of hard when I'm going back and forth between different elements and knowing that I should have done something. <laughs> so you just got to keep going. Um, and then in order to do the stars in the sky, I got this new pen. It's called a, a Uni Posca pen. Um, I was kind of testing it out in my sketchbook because I'd, it was the first time I was using it. Uh, but I thought it was really cool. It's very, very opaque. But I was a little nervous to use it on the painting and ended up ending up ruining it because it was my first time using the pen. So I'm saving that for a future painting. Um, and so for this one, I ended up sticking with my... Uh, tried and true uh, method of adding stars, which is white gouache. It's super easy and I can use my little brush and I just have total control over it. And so I did lots of tiny, tiny little stars, nothing too distracting, uh, just enough to add that um, nighttime look to it. Um, and in a way, I kind of wanted the viewer to you know, they know it's a night scene, but when they first glance at it, they might be like, oh, is that sunrise or sunset? But then seeing the stars in the sky, they would know that it's more of a, a nighttime scene. Um, and, I, and I'm sorry for the light that's on the painting. The, there was a little sliver of sunlight coming in. It was driving me crazy. Uh, the blinds didn't cover it. So that'll, that was another lesson <laughs> in recording this video. I'll try to improve it each time. I do a new video. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much pretty much it. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour of painting and it was really fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this this narrated version of the time lapse and let me know if you want to see anything specific or go over any other techniques in the future. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.